This game was not meant to be completed with less than 70 stars. However, this game was not programmed very securely and thus glitches were found to beat the game with 16 stars, and actually way less than 16 stars. Thus, you must first understand how these glitches came to be. You don't really, but they're, they're just interesting anyway, so I'm going to talk about them. The Spanish version of Club Nintendo in November 2000 had a special article which would go on to be quite important in Mario 64 history. On the lower half of the page, the page that's currently being displayed, there is a guide that supposedly can let you beat Super Mario 64 with 50 stars instead of 70. This trick became known as backwards long jumping because that's exactly what it is. Nothing was really heard about it again, except for probably people telling each other about it by word of mouth for three years, until March 16th, 2003, from a user on the game FAQ's forum for Mario 64, Ngera2000, who posted about it. Other people on the forum of course tried it, but none of them could get it to work. Maybe this was just a myth. People started to doubt that it was true. This is just too ludicrous to exist. How could you beat the game with less than 70 stars? People wanted proof. But luckily, Gera2000 gave them some proof. Gera2000 recorded himself doing the BLJs upon request. Using this video, people figured out how to actually do a BLJ. And this people did. People could now beat the game with only 50 stars. A day later, somebody beat the game with 31 stars. This is done by using another BLJ, which is much harder to do, up the 50 star door staircase. This is much harder than the one of the endless stairs, but people could still get the hang of it and beat the game with 31 stars. This is a 16 stars world record progression, but we're only at 30. May 10th, 2004 was a big day for Mario 64. A user called Dom Dunk posted about what he called a revolutionary new glitch. He says that it was something to bright up your days to beat Mario 64 with 16 stars. How was this possible? Well, you're about to find out. The video mentioned here seems to be lost to time, but people would start doing it quickly. Hello. And it begins. This is the first recorded speedrun of Super Mario 64 16 Star, done by Brad Cutler on June 19th, 2004. The final time was 27 minutes. I'm not sure which timing scheme that is by because the one used in this and the one used now are different. Timing now starts from console reset which means that you select the file while the timer is going. This run did not do that. Anyway. Everything is normal up until you get 15 stars, which I will now quickly cut to to say how to explain everything because it's stupid. collected it for the 15th star. There was only one thing left to do, and then a couple other things, and then the game would be done. As you can see, Mips is now spawned, which doesn't happen until you have 15 stars. After catching Mips, which is a challenge in and of itself, you can see another star. However, this is not the 16th star. Mips is brought over to the door here, and is brought through using some weird clipping technique because you, you can't normally do this. Mips is then brought to this door, which you can't go through until you have 30 stars. 
However, there is a way around this, as you will now see. What you do is you jump in between Mips and the door and, and don't screw it up, and then you get through. Unfortunately, there's a world blocking the entrance to the second boss level, Bowser and the Fire Sea. So you have to do one star here, which brings the total to 16 stars. Here we go! It was now time to enter the second boss level and get the second key. And now comes the potato part, the part you've all been waiting for, the backwards long jumps. With the second key, he can now go up to the top of the tower. He can get to the very top very quickly because of these glitches I've talked about. But first he has to go into D Dire Dire Docks again and quickly reset back to the main lobby of the castle. After screwing it up a few times, he does this. And the first and harder BLJ is done. Now to go up to the infinite staircase, where you're not supposed to be even near with the 16 stars. After a BLJ, you're at the top of the tower and ready to go defeat Bowser. Seven minutes exactly after he started, the first taped evidence of a 16 star speedrun had been done. Now things were ready to get serious. After two more world records, we're gonna get serious. November 6, 2004, the original speedrun was beat by Ilari Pekala, or Illu, with a time of 21.55, or 20.56, as it was called back then. The MIPS clip was faster. A 21.55 or a 20.56, it just depends on which timing scheme you use and what time frame you are from. Eddie Taylor came and beat the previous record in May 2005. An important thing to note about this run is that using the time standard that was used at the time, but not anymore. This was the first run to be sub 20 minutes. In this time scheme, it was in 1947. In the one used now, it was a 2046. I don't know how they'd know that because it doesn't have the start of it, but fine. Now we get really, really interesting. It is time for some cheaters. Unlike Summoning Salt, I'm going to talk about them because one of them is so hilarious and I'm so funny. Far in the future, in a different category, somebody made this comment on Chiefs 05's world record video. People were curious by this. At least one person, probably more, went on the person's YouTube channel and was probably surprised to find out that he, in fact, did have the world record back in about 2005. 
there was an actual run, but something seemed off. So someone did some investigating. The run has not been taken off of YouTube, but I found a mirror. Sorry for the audio quality here. This guy went and bragged on a world record speed run by Cheeto5, and lo and behold, guess what? This run was found out to be spliced. In case you don't know, splicing means taking multiple clips from different speed run playthroughs and putting them into one. This is considered cheating, unless it's a segment of them, which this was not claimed to be. The way this was found out was from discrepancies in the audio. There's noticeable changes during screen transitions that don't happen during single playthroughs, and only happen if somebody has stitched together different clips from different playthroughs. It is evident then that this is what has been done. Like was said by Apollo Legend, this guy would have not been questioned at all if he had not said anything about his fake time on this video. Nobody would have even questioned it at all if he hadn't just gone and bragged about it. Great job. However, this was not the only case of cheating back then, because the next world record speed run, or so it was claimed, was also spliced. Great job, guys. Can't find any footage of this one, so just enjoy some other spliced BLJs. This record was claimed by someone called Miles Burkham. He actually claimed two world records. I didn't mention the other one because, I mean, he cheated this one. Why wouldn't he have cheated the other one? That run was claimed to be a 2134, which would place it uh, just before Ilari Picard. There was also discrepancies in the audio found here too. However, in this case, Miles Burkham actually admitted that he cheated it. He said, and this is the actual quote, the video was spliced, the allegations are true, the evidence speaks for itself. So, that's something. Luckily, there have been no known, at least, spliced world records, at least in this category, other than these two. Let's go forward in time a little bit, because we're getting into the busy section. Late 2009 to early 2010. On the speedrun.com statistics page, it's like a cluttered mess. There is such a number of runs from this period. Coincidentally, or maybe not, this is also the beginning of the Japanese dominance. This would last up until 2012. That's quite a long time. The Japanese dominance mostly just applies actually to 17 and 120 star. In this run, Japanese are still quite on top, actually. This is a run by Zaya, which is a world record, from January 18th, 2015. You might wonder why I'm not using a clip from before. Well, there are two reasons. A, some of them don't have videos, and B, some of them are uploaded onto Nico Nico, which I don't know how to download videos from. Anyway, I can still talk about the older runs while this plays in the background. You can watch this and observe how some things are different. And after I talk about how the world record has progressed up till 2015, I will talk about the new developments since 2005. Taka12352 and Shigeru both traded the world record in late 2009 to early 2010, during the time from the first world record in years, uh, in 1809, down, down to 1641 in June 2010 by Shigeru. Now, some new runners were emerging, although Shigeru was still getting some world records. By August 2011, the time had been brought down to a 15.54 by Akira, and, and this time was then beaten by Batura, who I will talk about maybe in her time, 15.52.950, February 17, 2012. Batura has been, has been around for years and years. She got world records in some of the longer categories back in 2010, and is still a world record contender today. That's a long time. Anyway, on April 18th, 2013, Akira got a 1544 440. This record was apparently very good, 
so good it stood for all of 2014 and wasn't beaten until early 2015. This is the run you're watching right now. Let's talk about this first. Something feels wrong here. If you are watching the beginnings of the other runs, you'll notice Lakitu says a text box. However, he doesn't. Why isn't he doing it now? The answer is very, very simple. If you land from a long jump, or I guess another jump, on the very specific edge of the bridge, you can skip the text box and then just long jump into the door, saving a couple seconds. What's this? A skip for the first Bowser door? You can get there with zero stars, as it's done here. And for the first star, you just use this. You just use the Bowser Red star. As you can see, you do a BLJ in an invisible wall, and you get zoomed in to the Bowser room. It's not the Bowser room, but it doesn't matter. These skips have brought the time down to a low 15. Well, this is a 15:35. Time did get down to a low 15. But how did it get there? Time was brought down to a 15.29 by Zaya on July 15, 2015. Akira got a 15.29, Zaya got a 15.28, Zaya got a 15.24, Ouija 14 got a 15.17, Drodowski got a 15.16, and Aki got a 15.08. The current world record is this 15.08 that is currently playing. Now I have almost nothing to talk about, except for one world in particular, where there are quite a number of strats that I'm going to talk about. I could have talked about them in the 120 star video I'm going to make, but I'm not because I'm an idiot. <laughs> This star to someone who doesn't know much about speedrunning in this game makes no sense. Why would you waste time doing some weird movement like this? How did you get the star from doing that? Well, let's explain. Very, very simply, extremely simply, that is just a way to clip in. It's a way of accurately clipping in. That's it. This star also is incredibly strange. You pick up a bottom, do some weird thing, and then it's doing... it's big, and you're being pushed back a long way. Well, there's also a star in B.O.B. or the battlefield that can do the same thing. What it, the bomb, when big, boosts Mario back, kind of but not really like the B.L.J. By doing this, you can clip into bars, in Pokemon Battlefield, or into the Ancient Pyramid, which is a lot faster, but also pretty really hard. The world record has increased not that much in recent years. However, the world record has still progressed, and it is a very interesting progression. However, Mario 64 has other categories, longer categories, categories with intense grinds, categories where we can mention the SM64 gods, because they're somehow not on the world record at this time. At least not that I can see. But, for other categories, 